Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to be drawing the time and the hands for the analog clock. So this is what our project looks like at the moment and this is the code we have so far got. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a function that will be used to generate or create the time for the clock. So this will include adding some variables. So we need to use the date um, to get the hour, the minute and the second. So I've added this function here from line 51 to 68. This is the function that will be responsible for drawing the time. So here we've got, we've defined the function here called draw time and inside parentheses, we are referencing these two par parameters, the context and the radius. Here we've got some variables. So we're using the date to get the hour, the minute and the second. So this here we've got variable called now, which will display the current date and variable hour which will give us hours so we're doing the now dot get hours uh, we're referencing this variable now but getting the hours here again we're using the variable this variable called now to get the minutes and get the seconds so this block here these are just variables that will get the current time now the the hours the minutes and the second and the rest of the block of code here basically we're going to use we're going to calculate the angle of the hour hand and draw it a length which is going to be 50 percent of the radius and a width which is going to be seven percent of the radius. so the same technique is used for the minutes and the seconds so this block of code here calculates the angle of the hour hand and also draws it a length which is going to be 50 percent of radius and the width of seven percent of radius so i'm applying the same technique for the minutes and for the seconds so I have to include this function inside the draw clock method or draw clock function. So I just copy that and go to where the draw clock function is and just include that. So we've got the draw clock function. So I just come down here and add that. So this is the function that will reference the other functions. Okay, so the next function I am going to add on is going to be the function that will draw the actual hands for the. So I've now added the function to draw the hand. If you notice in this function here called draw time, we already made reference to this function here. So we can see here we've got the draw hand here, we've got the draw hand here, and we we'll draw hand here. So we've already referenced this function so there's no need to add this function to the draw clock function because we are referencing it inside the draw time function so quickly i'll just run through what the draw hand is doing here inside this draw hand function we've got this parameters here inside the parentheses we've got the context we've got the position the length and the width so these are all parameters that are passed into this draw hand function. So again, we've got the begin path, which is the actual start of the path. So this basically is where the drawing begins. And then we've got the line width. This represents the line of the width of the hand. And we're setting that to the width. We've got the line cap and we're setting that to the line cap property basically is used to set or return the style of the end 
caps for a line. Um, the value round and square make the lines slightly longer. So in this case, we've used the value round. So here we've got the move method uh, basically represents how you want the hand to move. So the default value here, we've got zero, zero here, which represent position on the X and Y coordinates. And here we've got the rotate method. We're passing in the position. Okay. And here on line 78, we've got the line two basically represents the line two. The line two method adds a new point and creates a line to that point from the last specified point in the canvas. Um, the key thing to know that this method does not draw the line. The stoke method is actually used to draw the path on the canvas. So we've got the move to, we basically um, this method represents how the hand of the clock moves. And uh, we've got the rotate. Again, this is responsible in that inside the parenthesis, we passed it the parameter of position. So it will rotate based on the position. And here we've got the line two. Um, we've already covered what the line two is. And then the stroke, the stroke is actually, this stroke method actually draws the path on the canvas. So the actual drawing of the line will be done using the stroke method. Again, we're using the rotate method to um, do the positioning because we passed in the position here. You notice here we've set it to equals to position. So here we've got negative position, also a negative length. So which means it will go in the opposite direction. So that is basically the functions that will create the time, draw the time, and also the hand for the clock. So I'm just going to save that, go file, save all, and then we can check it out in our, inside our browser and just see, excellent. So you can see we've got our hand, but the clock is not moving. So we need to create a clock start method that will be used to start the clock. So we've got everything in place. We've got the numbers, we've got the hand. We just need the clock to start. In order for us to start the clock, we need to call the draw clock function at intervals. So we need to set the intervals for the draw clock functions to run or to start. So we're going to modify the draw clock function. To start the clock, we need to modify um, where we're calling the clock from and also change set the interval. So here on line six, where we've got the draw clock, we are going to change this block of code. So here I've changed the line six. So I'm using calling the set interval method. So this is what will be responsible for starting the clock. And we can see here the interval is 1000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to um, one second. So this basically will allow the clock to start every second. The clock will be ticking. So that's what this is. This is in milliseconds. So that is how the set interval method works. So the draw clock will be called for each 1000 milliseconds intervals. So I saved this change. I should, we should get the clock working now. So let's go back to the clock. I'm just going to refresh. And you can see the clock ticking which is uh, referencing the current time on my computer. Excellent. So if you've got your clock working, many, many congratulations. If you've got any issues, um, just take a look at the code again, or just um, send me a message. 
I'll be more than happy to assist. So congratulations and take care.